All right, so in this video, I really want to show you what late blight is. I couldn't really do it justice by saying late blight versus early blight in that last video I did because I didn't really have any late blight showing itself. Well, I'm going to show you what late blight looks like and, you know, w you know what to expect and how to deal with it. So here's, here's a look at some late blight. It usually starts off lower in the plant, but it can start off midway and up. How it gets up so high, I really don't know. But generally, late blight looks like this. And I ripped this whole leaf off because I want to get this off of my plant anyway. And now that I'm handling it, I can't really handle any other part of the plant if I don't want it to spread. So basically, this is what late blight looks like. Okay, it's going to be stained like a like a black stain, and it spreads out. Okay. Here's some more late blight. This whole leaf is infected with late blight. It's kind of wilty. It's dry. It's, it's like hanging, saggy. It's got all kinds of different little features to it. It's a very consistent, consistently different type of a blight than early blight. And it's always kind of manifests, it, it manifests itself like this. Here's some more. Okay, that's more what late blight looks like. Uh, let's see, we got anything else? Yeah, here's more late blight, and it's really spreading itself out across my plant. So basically, when you see late blight on your plant, the main thing you want to do to deal with it is you want to get it, if, if whatever, wherever you see it, and I'm going to do it on here, you know, after I'm done with this video, but I'm going to show you generally what you want to do to get rid of or eliminate late blight from get, becoming catastrophic on your plant. Here's a good example of one. All right, so over here, this leaf here is is infected with late blight, but it hasn't gone. I like to use this term systemic. It hasn't gone into the stem of the plant and traveled up to the base of the plant yet. So this plant can actually be saved from late blight, providing I act quick and deal with the problem with this late blight. So basically what I do is I'll take that leaf that I want to remove and I just snap it midway like that. And I'll leave that stem on there. Leave that alone. Don't try to interfere with that. If you use scissors to cut this off, you really risk getting that late blight into that stem and traveling back to the main plant and spreading it to the main plant. Avoid doing that. You can use scissors, but you're going to have to soak them in bleach like I do once in a while when I go around trimming my plants up. I have a cup of of bleach that I dip the scissors in for every single cut that I make and that helps avoid spreading of the late blight now it has been raining for like two weeks or two and a half weeks we got almost we got over 10 inches of rain I think we got we ended up with uh, 11 and a half inches of rain so far since that day now we had a sunny day or two come out since but it's been raining non-stop and this is where late blight really steps in and that's what I was afraid of the whole time. And sure enough, here it is. This is the late blight kicking in. All right, so when you break off your stems, you wanna make sure you snap that stem off, leave that little piece of stem there, that'll turn yellow. When it gets to that point, remove it then. It'll The, the plant will give it up on its own. If you try to remove this now, you're gonna end up stripping a strip of the plant is going to strip and rip upwards. Once you do that, that plant is pretty much garbage after that because that late blight is gonna get right into that wound and really infect your plant. So I do have a number of areas where late blight is really rearing its ugly head. I'm gonna to try to treat a lot. I don't wanna strip all the leaves off my plant right now because it needs to be able to produce its own food. So some of it I'm gonna to have to leave on here. But I am seeing some other areas that are potentially that may have to get like this sucker here. I re just removed that and because why did I do that? Because I see it on the stem of the plant. I don't want this to spread to the main stem of the main plant. I can always strip all these leaves off and let it re you know redo itself. You can see this whole stem is getting infected with late blight. Could be anthracnose over here a little bit, but I'm pretty confident that this is all late blight. And I want to show you what happens when it gets back to the stem of the plant. When late blight, if untreated or you don't do anything about it and you just keep letting it work its way back to the main stem of the plant, sometimes it forms on the main stem of the plant and there's really nothing you can do about that. What ends up happening is this, all right? Now I cut this plant out. You see, you see how it, it went into the center part of that plant? 
this this plant is screwed okay so I had to remove this from the main part of the plant which may or may not actually solve the problem it, it probably it, it, I got to it too late and it's very possible that this late blight got already into the main stem of the plant it's gonna get into the soil that's it it's garbage once it gets and this can spread and do this very quickly this can't be more than maybe a week old yeah, well maybe more, a little more than that maybe two weeks old since it's probably you can see over here it probably started from that stem right there and it traveled down from that stem and you see what it did it's already infecting the whole plant it's into the pith of the plant it's already gone systemic so this this plant is pretty much gone because of late blight so it may be too late for me to actually save that plant I don't remember if it was this one or if it was the one over here I'm really not sure which one it was at this point but that's what happens sometimes and even even if you do all of these things you still might get it anyway but you might be able to hold off the worst part of late blight from completely wiping out your tomato crop because it can happen at like with all this rain we had these plants could be wiped out within a week because of that blight that late blight kicking in and it just gets in there and it's just going to do this to you now i gotta wash my hands with bleach because i'm handling this thing but you can see what it looks like that's what it looks like now if you leave this plant alone let's say you let it rot out completely eventually you'll see this white fuzz come out of it that's when it's gone into its spore stage you definitely want this removed before it gets into its spore stage so if you see it get it out of there you might as well rip the plant out at that point because that that right there is worse if it's not it's bad or if not worse than tomato wilt which is a soil borne disease this is a much 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 more severe problem if you got this kind of fungal disease in your in your plants all right here's another look at look at the uh, stem here here's another piece of stem okay uh, here's a cup of bleach I'm gonna stick my hand in there my hands are covered in bleach now that'll kill off those spores these right here I'm gonna gather them up when I get a chance I'm gonna bring it over to the fire I'm gonna crank up a little fire and I'm gonna burn it completely will it completely eliminate blight from getting on the rest of my plants absolutely not the blight the late blight literally lives on the surface of your trees the ground it, it it's airborne in the soil like when we just got that big rain what it did was is it caused it caused the it caused the spores to become airborne now so now it's blowing around in the air and it's really going to really get on your plants really hardcore so you really when you get a lot of rain like that you really got to be on top of it um if it wasn't for that blight it wouldn't be that big of a deal but because that that um that blight is uh the problem for your tomatoes it's going to get on everything now it even i'll even show you late blight is even attacking my trees just to give you an idea how severe a late blight is sub so early blight is bad but late blight is the absolute worst that that will absolutely devastate your tomatoes okay so right there where are you right there you see how late blight is affecting some of the leaves on my trees Okay, so it is airborne. You, you will see late blight on all different kinds of plants, not just tomato plants. Okay, grass, the grass gets what's known as grass blight. But grass blight is basically late blight in a different form. It just causes uh, the grass to do something a little different, but basically that can easily get on your tomato plants and give you grass blight and your tomato plants, which is basically late blight. It's the same fungi, if I'm not mistaken. Here's some more late blight. All right, right there. Okay, that's more late blight. This plant is really covered bad with late blight. Now, one of the reasons why I kind of left this on here is because I want to see how the tomato plant is reacting to the blight, being I have all these biofungicides in there. And so far, so good, but not so good in some ways. I mean, it's already killed this plant. This one's pretty much dead. It's about to die. It's already, you know, this one's gone, you know. Oop, I dropped a tomato. I ripped it off because this plant is, this one's dead. And you can see what happens, what it does, is it splits that stem in half. That pith rots out. You got to get it off of there. All right? So this one's done. That's the end of that plant. Oh, I dropped my tomatoes. I got to do a tomato review on this one. I'll let them ripen up in here a little bit. So I got to cut this back somewhere at some point and get rid of this. 
this has got to get cut back. But now this plant in particular has both. It has lake blight and it has what's known as black spot septoria, which you can see right here. And it seems like it, the plant is trying to fight it back and hold it back as much as possible, but it's going to lose the battle eventually. So I'm going to have to strip all these leaves off and... I'm not going to spray it with a fungicide because I don't like the power of, of what the fungicide did. Here's some more. See how the late blight is on? It's hitting that steel. For some reason, it's. I don't recommend using galvanized anymore. I don't like the galvanized. I don't like what it's doing to my tomato plants. Uh, the galvanized needs to be treated with like a paint. But this is what a biofungicide did to this plant. Now, I sprayed this plant pretty heavily and it's just utterly killed this entire plant almost. And you can see the stem on that thing sticker to my thumb. All right, that's a huge tomato plant that was growing in there and I nearly killed it by spraying it with a biofungicide. So, I, I you know, I, I mean, I probably completely poisoned the soil and everything because it's killing off the other branches. This plant's gonna die. It, that copper sunk down into the soil. Now it's poisoning the whole plant. So I don't, I, I'm, I'm kind of a little on the fence right now about the, the copper biofungicide and using that as a way to treat it. Uh, I did spray all these plants with it, but I did it really lightly. You don't want that biofungicide to drip down into your pots and get to the root system because that will contaminate your plants and poison them, cause them to die. But not to get too far off track, I just want to show you what the late light actually looks like because I couldn't show that to you in the last video like here I just ripped the whole stem off see my plants when they start getting this disease they just drop the whole stem on its own uh, here's some more late blight you can see what's happening here okay this is all late blight coming out and this is because of the rain that we just got more more late blight that's what late blight looks like it looks like that and you'll notice it it, it, it just gets on the leaves at all different points of the plant. Okay, this is like midway to plant. It's getting it on here. So it's, it's not necessarily coming from the bottom up, though it can. And a lot of times it does. But when you get a really hard raining season, where you get a lot of rain, it just it's in the air. And it's just going to get on there. That fungus, that fungus spore is out and ready to do damage. All right, so... That's just a quick video on the effects and what late blight actually looks like. I wanted to just make a specific video about that. I'm going to treat this plant, you know, now I'm going to rip most of these leaves off. And it may already be too late. It's probably going to spread all over the plant. But uh, this particular plant isn't handling uh, the biofungicides I put in the soil very well. Including the mycorrhizae and stuff, it's not really seems like it's a it's affecting it, but maybe it is. I don't know. All right, so that's just a quick look at late blight. Let me give you one last good image of a good late blight. Yeah, you can see over here too. You see on the stem. See how it it's going on the leaf part all the way back into the stem. Once that stem gets it and it gets inside this part of the stem, if you don't remove that stem fast enough, it will come back to the main part of the plant and kill it very quickly too. So, all right. Here's a good example of it. All right. That was a video about late blight. Just wanted to give you a better uh, image of it and how to identify it and how to remove the leaves from your plant in the event you do have it. As far as keeping it off your plant, I don't know. Yeah, there's really no. Once you start seeing it, that means it's airborne and that thing's in full spore space stage. So, all right. So, good luck. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.